G'day, I'm Steve Hay. Welcome to my workshop. This is Woodworking Masterclass. Well, here we are, part three of part six of building the bookcases. Last episode, we cut the dados in the sides. This episode, I want to put the shelves in and put the back on. And if we've got time, we'll do some other bits and pieces. If not, we'll carry that over to part four. So, move these out of the way. Dados are all cut and cleaned. Now here are the shelves. Now exactly the same as we did in part one with the shelves. Don't trust the measurements that you get when you buy it from the hardware shop. As you can tell, they're not all the same length. So what I'll do, pop over to the drop saw, cut them all to length. And as I said, I'm not interested in the actual physical length, but I do want them to be all the same length. So whatever they end up, they end up. There we have it, all cut to the same length. And I don't know what that length is and I don't care. Now the other thing you'll notice, and I definitely noticed when I was docking those, is they vary in width. That is this way. They're not dead straight, so they're not parallel. But again, this is a, an easy to do bookcase. Don't stress about it. If you're a couple of mil out, it really doesn't matter and you won't notice it in the end result. I guarantee it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is what I did with the uprights or the sides of the bookcase, I'm just gonna go over it with 100 grit and what that'll do is break the surface down, take off any uh, machining marks that, put my glasses on, yeah, that are a little bit e evident and when I rub my hand over there, I can just feel the fibers of the timber burring up. So again, could use a cork block, but for ease of demonstration and ease on the demonstrator, I'll use a uh, random audible sander. This is 100 grit. So I'll just give it a quick lick. Alrighty, that's the shell sanded. Now, a good thing about sanding, which is a byproduct, I suppose, is you actually get to look at the board. And there was two that I found. There we go. One had a gum vein, and one of the other ones, the glasses on, actually had a split. And that one's got a little knot hole. All right. Now, because I'm going to finish this bookcase with a, a liming white solution, I'm really not too fussed about any blemishes because they'll be hidden underneath the shelves. But, seeing we're here, I'll show you a couple of little tricks about using putty and when to use it, when not to use it, and how you can get away with it. First of all, what I like is grab some... Isn't that marvellous? The kids have been down here and they've... Knocked off granddad's sticky tape. Oh, this will it. This is masking tape, but I prefer sticky tape for this job. But anyway, what you do is, where's that gum vein? There we go. This one here, it's got a bit of sap around it, and it's about two mil deep. Just get some putty. Now there's a whole range of different putties and they're called by the name of the timber. 
And in my experience, they don't match the timber they're called after. And um, what you have to do is mix them. And what they've got a, a natural, which is a white base. And so you can darken, I think there's an ebony here somewhere or other. Um, oh, it's an ebony over there. So I've got a black and a white. And whatever putty I use, whatever color, I can alter the um, lightness or darkness of it by mixing in the light putty or the dark putty. Now, as a rule, the other thing is I generally don't putty until I've at least got a coat of lacquer on it because the timber will darken. And if you match the putty with the timber in its raw state, when you put a finish on it, the timber will darken, the putty won't, and so therefore it'll be lighter than the timber and it's very, very noticeable. If you ever have to use putty too, um, a rule of thumb I use is always go darker than the timber because if you've got a light putty in there, it'll stick out. Whereas a dark one, the eye will run over it. In this case, because I'm going to be cover it with liming white, which we'll do in the last episode, it doesn't really matter if I match the timber or not, but we'll get pretty close to it just so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. I'm not going to try and match the surrounding timber. I'm going to try and match that dark area that's in there, which is very caramelly colour. And to me... That looks to be like an oak with a little bit of brown in it. So there's oak. Now what I'll do is mix up. Actually, before we do that, that's what I needed the tape for, I mask the area off. I used to, much to my mentor's disgust, used to put it on with a trowel, just and then sand it all off later. But then he showed me this really great technique Jeff, if you're watching, I'm still doing it. A little bit of tape either side of where you're trying to bog up. So I've completely surrounded the area with tape. Okay, I'll take a little bit of, this is oak. This is water soluble as well, which is great. It doesn't dry your hands out when you're mixing it up. And the other thing I like about it is it actually retains its colour when it's dry. There are some that actually lighten when they dry. Now you can do this with a palette knife if you like, but I uh, couldn't be bothered. Okay, so now I'm pushing in there nice and deep. And remember, I said I didn't want to match the colour of the timber. I want to match the colour of what I'm actually filling. And the other advantage of having this paper or this tape around it, and see how messy I'm getting there? And then when you're done with it, you take it away, and that's all we're left with. And when I sand that back, it'll be the colour of whatever the blemish was. So now we've got a split here, and it's nearly gone all the way through the board. So an old metalworking trick to stop the split drill a very small hole at the end of the split, which is here. And what that actually does, it relieves the tension. So now the split can open, it won't continue to go down the board. So we saved a bit of timber there. Same thing. Now you can, if you like, you can just get glue, put it at the edge of the edge of the split like like that and just force glue into the joint that'll work fine but because this is going in a bookcase this will be underneath um, I'm not too worried the other thing to look out if you do that technique remember to get all the glue off because if you're going to stain and when you put the stain over if there's glue there it's going to prevent the stain from going in the timber so you're going to end up with this horrible light patch and it's pretty obvious. So I just put a bit of tape along there. And I'll just push this right down into the split. And if you can, you just leave it so it's level with the tape. That way, when it dries, if, and there will be a very slight amount of shrinkage, 
it's still high enough above the board that when you sand it flat, you don't get that dip. If you've ever seen um, big boards that have been filled with putty and then the putty's been wiped off to the level of the board before the putty's dry and then it goes bleh, and it sinks. So this way it won't sink. Let's take that off. And there we have a very, very nice, neat little putty joint. So what I'll do is I'll put these to one side and let them dry and we can start working on the other ones. Okay, sides. Whoop, bang, crash. Work out which is the front and which is the back. If there's any horrible pieces or however you like that set up. It's got a little hole in it too, but we'll worry about that later. That can go at the back. So I'll have this is the front here. And I'll put a little mark there so I know that's the front. And the same with this one. Okay. This is going to be the front on this. So they should all line up nicely like that. And they do. Work with one side first. Work out which side of the board you want up. This is the top of the cupboard. It's got a little bit of a mark there. I'm not too fussed with that. That's got nice grain pattern in the front, so I'll have that facing the front. And this is going to be the front. So that's going to go around that way. Sometimes these boards, as this one has cupped just a little bit, so you just have to sort of maneuver it to get it in. But what I'm looking for is to line it up on the front. I'm not worried about lining it up at the back. If it's a mill out at the back, it doesn't matter, but I want it lined up on the front. Next one. If you have a look at that there, get a little bit of sandpaper. It's just one, 150, I think. 150, 180, doesn't matter. And then lightly problem fix. And you can't even see the hole that I drilled to release the pressure from that split. If you do have troubles getting them in, if you grab a block plane, or look, <clears throat> if you haven't got a block plane, any plane will do, or even say 100 grit sandpaper on um, a cork block, one of these cork blocks, and just chamfer the edge. I'll use a box plane. You can just see I'm taking a very fine cut off. And that's just giving me a very slight leading edge. So when I go to put this in, it'll lead in quite nicely. And there you have it. So I'll finish doing these, and then, I feel, I feel as if I've been locked up. And then, what I'll do is take them out and we'll glue them. Now the reason I'm not gluing them when I first put them in, is because, depending on how quickly your glue goes off, if you have a little bit of trouble like I have fitting these because they're a little bit warped or they might be a little bit fatter, you can get them in and know that they fit. And then when the glue's in, you can move straight ahead. There's nothing worse than getting glue in, the glue starts to go off, your job starts to jam halfway through, then you've got to take the shelf out, then you've got to clean all the glue out and you've got to do it all again and you risk putting glue on the surfaces you don't want glue on. So this is a much better way, dry assembly, and then when it's all put together, we'll pull it all apart, glue it up, and do the same thing. So I'll just finish off doing this. All right, so we'll pull them out. And as we pull them out, we'll put them straight back in. I'm using a moderately drying glue. It's not a fast drying glue, and it's not one that takes a long time. So it's just a... PVA and what we're going to do is actually nail these in as well and as per usual I much prefer double gluing that
that way I know that glue has got on both surfaces. If you've got a nail gun at this stage, by all means, use a nail gun. And it's just to, to hold it in. Really, the glue should hold it enough, but it's nice to couple of nails for added security. These are 40 mil, or just over an inch and a half, by 1.6 mil brads. So I'm just gonna put uh, two in each shelf, I think. You can, if you like, put a very small guide hole in just to keep your nail level, but I wouldn't put the drill all the way through the side. The drill is the same size as the nail, so I'm just just giving myself uh, about an eighth of an inch or three mil into the side, and then I'll put the nail in. Now, if you're confident, you can put the second one in and just go by eye. If not, I will turn the bookcase over and we'll just put them in the other side. That way we can see the shelf, we can see where the, the nail's going. If I haven't banged the overhead around too much, we'll be able to see. That so just goes in there like that. Try not to actually hit the timber. What I've got here is a little nail punch and that goes over the end of the nail like that. and counter sinks it in, instead of me hitting it with a hammer and leaving a big round bruise there. And then we'll fill those with putty later on and I'll show you a neat little trick with that. Always a good practice if you've been using nails or screws and you're gonna put something on your bench, make sure they're all gone because they will stick in. So once you're happy, they all fit and they're all home. Take the top part off or just move it to another part of your bent. And with this one, you've got to glue them all up at the same time. So put glue in all four slots. We don't use the top one yet. We'll do that one later on. And a bit of glue on the ends. And we're really starting the motor. So once you're happy with them, all home, they're glued in, same thing. Turn it up, you'll notice that this gets progressively heavier. Then, same thing. Little guide holes into the shelf. Let's canvas sink them all. Turn it over. And do the same on the other side. That's the carcass put together, except for the top bit, which I suppose we can do now. Now remember in the beginning, I said I'm gonna use an extra board. And the reason for that is when I fit the top on, it's much easier to fit the top. So this one you won't see, so if it's a bad board, put your worst board up here. Oh, just make sure it fits nicely. Which is not too bad at all. And there's the carcass. And you'll notice we haven't used any right angles, any combination squares, hardly any measuring because we've just taken it for whatever we got it out of the shop. Now to make sure it's square, instead of trying to square all the shelves up, the easiest way is get a measuring tape and we check the diagonals. Put it on the diagonal there and bring it up here. That's five and a half feet or 1536, depending if you metricate it or not. And on this angle, it's 1,536 or five and a half feet. So if the diagonals are the same, it means the carcass is square. And we've spaced all the shelves in identical fashion. So how easy is that? No pulling your hair out at all. We've got a square cabinet. Well, 
we know the cabinet square and that's a great start. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to get the back on, but we'll do that in part four along with some other bits and pieces. But I hope you've got some nice information you can use regarding putties and nailing and you have a go at making this because it really is a project that is within the reach of anyone's skill level. This is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe and enjoy your woodwork and I'll see you in part four. Oh, please like us on Facebook and if you want to know more, join up the e-workshop at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au. Bye for now. Good day, Nigel. All the best, mate. Good on you. And Spencer, well played this time. Good day. Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. You know, when I need hardware or any bits and pieces, this is where I come. Masters Parkinson, near Browns Plains in Queensland. But with almost 60 stores nearly Australia-wide, there's bound to be one near you. So why don't you do as I do, go to Masters for your hardware. And if you see me in the Parkinson store, say good day.